Good evening. I'll we'll call the Brandon Select Board to order for February 10th. Thank you all for attending this evening. First item is to adopt the agenda. Is there a motion relative there too? I move. And I second. Like it moves. Mr. Guile seconds. Any changes to be made? Yeah, I'd like to add a 7A, um, a short discussion about the BLSG report in the town report. Okay. 7A, discussion of the BLSG report in the town report. Anything else? If not, all in favor of the agenda as amended say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Item 2, the minutes of January 27th. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Aye. Motion and a second. Any errors or omissions? I unfortunately have one. Sorry for showing. So on page 7, item 7, the Town Farm Road Traffic Study. So about a third of the way down the big paragraph, it says the report indicates the average speed was 29 miles per hour, but the average speed was 24. There was another speed that was reflected that was 29. I think it was the median speed or something like that. And then further down, three lines up from the bottom in the same paragraph, it said in a five-year span there have only been two accidents on the paved portion, but I believe it was on the unpaved portion. That's true, too. So that should be unpaved and not paved. <clears throat> and then at the end of that item, um, it says the motion failed one to three, and I believe the motion failed one to four. I think we all voted. Yeah, we're trying to make everybody vote on everything. So you're going to vote on Yeah, if there's a number. Any other spots in the minutes? If not, all in favor of approval of the minutes as amended, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Two uh, in favor of the minutes? Aye. I think. I don't know what you've been. Okay. You got it already. Mr. Bailey abstains. Three, zero, one. Item three, town manager's report. Last report for the week to January 27th and February 4th. Uh, segment six, pretty brief. Uh, they installed the hand railings downtown in the area last week. Um, about it for right now, for now until snow leaves again. Um, we see the draft plan for the town hall sidewalk roof, and uh, we'll have a construction cost soon. I did attach the draft plan to my report for you guys to take a look at. Um, right construction, what we're doing with the sidewalk roof, but it's also, I had a look at the roof here on the east side of the building. There's some damage that some ice went through it. I'm not even sure how long ago. Um, so, they're going to redo the roof there, um, sizable hole in it, this is ruined a section of plywood sheathing, and um, we're putting the shingles on it. So it's about, um, we're hoping they can do it for around two grand or maybe less, depending on how long it takes them. So get that fixed up. Um, this morning I met with uh, Devin Neary from the Regional Planning Commission to complete a site visit at the parking area behind the mobile station. Um, we're hoping to submit a transportation grant for the construction of the parking area. This will cover 50% if it's awarded to us. Um, a couple things we've looked at is doing some more uh, storm water mitigation projects with some bioswells down there because there's a burp down there. Um, some better lighting. The discussion was had about putting some 24 hour surveillance in there and doing uh, like a bus stop type thing like we used to have up here by Abishan's sort of make this kind of park and ride friendly. Um, so there's more funding out there too if we turn it into a kind of a green type area with the stormwater mitigation. So we would still be paid in it. Um, but, so uh, I actually got Dave Conger from DNK to give us a real rough draft plan set that we can use for the proposal. So um, we'll have that submitted here probably by the 1st of March and find out in May whether we receive it or not. Um, attended the regional plan transportation meeting on the 30th. Um, the discussion was on class one highway priority list for Rutland County. And it was nice this time to see that all of our class one highway projects are finally off the list. And as you know, we had a lot of them on there for a lot of years. So it's good to see us off the list finally. Meaning completed. Completed. Yeah, right. yeah they just took us off. So, yeah. Um, Park Street was the last one. So, um, and we know that's starting this year. 
And uh, we'll have a contractor engineer pre-construction meeting on March 10th for Park Street. Um, and after that, we will schedule a public meeting to discuss the project timeline. So, uh, rec news. The, the new Brandon Rec website is up online. Um, you can check it out at brandonvt.myrec.com. Uh, 2020 Middlebury Snowball registrations will be the first of our youth program that will use the new site, collaboration with Pittsburgh Rec. Um, we'll have a bus with skiing or riding lessons half a day pass on the first four Sundays, first, first, four, first four Sundays in March. How many Sundays are there? Five. <laughs> Five, yeah, man. The town hall was rocking on Saturday night. The grip that I was entertained with, the real buzz was uh, upcoming teen band opener, Sweet Sphinx. They taste Featured a host of talented musicians from Brandon. Keep an eye out for them. They're actually playing at the distillery on Friday. Everyone wants to go. Uh, February 15th will mark the first of the theme Brandon Idol concerts. $5 admission. You can hear these performers sing country tunes with our live house band, along with a featured guest performer and a group member. This is a great way to spend a wintry Saturday night. The adult beverages are provided by Mace. And a local AAU team will have concessions. See you there. Should we pass? Should we also pass on the information to Tracy's singing? Indeed. He might be a special guest. Yeah. He's no, he's no, he's 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 <laughs> a shout out to the Brandon Area Toy Project and the Street PTO for partnering to host the first mom prom at the town hall on February 22nd. This is a ladies only event from 8 to 10 uh, before the doors open up for the guys. Mm -hmm. Dressing up and dancing like senior year classmates. The tickets for this and all Brandon Rec events are available online at our website. February break camp will be hosted at Town Hall featuring our camp director, Ms. Colleen Wright. Uh, from 9 to 1 Monday to Friday, these 5 to 13 year olds will be line dancing, playing cornhole, watching movies, singing, as well as producing some pretty sweet crafts. Drop-ins encouraged. Uh, and basketball ends, our, signs, our sights turn towards spring sports. Currently, the rec is looking for volunteer baseball and a cross coach. Please contact Mr. Bill Moore with any interest. And the only other thing I have is I did attach a select board uh, training brochure. I'm sure you guys all got it, but I yes. um, just wanted to share that with you. Thank you, Mr. Atherton. Questions for the town manager from the select board? Mr. I just want to say that I heard down here as far as the. Devin Neary and the Rockwell Region Planning Commission, if, if we were able to get a grant that could cover even some of the 50% towards paving? It would cover 50% of the project cost, yeah. Thank you. Well, we're hoping too that if we can coordinate this right, we're kind of kind of trying to fast track this. So, fortunately, we're kind of like build ready down there, which is good. And because it's such a small lot, we actually don't have to deal with a lot of the state permitting because it's less than an acre. Um, that if we can get online and get this stuff done at the same time that Dunkin' Donuts is doing their payment, with, I've talked to Dan Foochire there, and we could try to just continue it, with, especially with our top help, so we're seeing this would be the way. We're hoping that's what we can break. Super. Thank you. Um, Mr. Atherton, relative to the east side of the town hall old stairwell entrance, what is the present use of that? Emergency exit. Is that yeah, it's actually the one right here. If you walk oh, the, the, the restrooms are more straight. Um, but the, the there's been a hole in there for a while, and it's really starting to mold the plywood. So, it, so is there has there been water like down in the, in the bowl? I no. I don't know. I mean, it's got it's been kind of covered up, but it's definitely the roof's holding some water. So, okay. yeah. questions for the town manager from the public, Alan Walter. Dave, um, we have our Greenways Committee meeting tomorrow, which is part of the DBA, and the new parking area keeps coming up at every meeting, and it seems like, especially now there's a bus stop there, do you know what the public walkability is going to be like coming in and out of the new parking area? Because it seems like it's just kind of that driveway. Let's go past the so the town, the town has a right of way on this side of the, of the so the east side of the building. Um, we're, like I said, we're in the early stages of planning here, so we're looking at what we can do for walkability and how we would do a sidewalk coming out of there if we ran it along the buildings or along more of the stone wall area. Closer to, so we really don't know yet. I mean, it's, Got it. we're going through someone else's property, so we have to work with them to see how we're going to deal with it. Okay. Great. 
Other questions from the public? Mr. Frankowitz. Uh, new uh, town fire rules going to be repaid? Mm, not for a while. I don't think so. No. Um, that one we'd have to do a rebuild on. We're looking at that's a few years. Is that back. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty far up. Drainage is bad. So um, I believe our our our, our Shannon overlay projects were parked for the, whole, the next coming year would be Park Street Extension, Country Club Road North from Park Street Extension to Route 73, and Corona Street is what we're looking at. And then others, you know, what we have left over, we get whatever we could. So, but hey, those are the. Is it, is it asphalt? Yeah. Well, if we have some funds left over, you know, we could do a couple small jobs like we're looking so that, at. Right. Funnel at the end of uh, New Road and Town Farm Road. Yep. It gets splashed up here and it turns to ice. Yep. That one's going to take more than just a shim and an overlay, though. That road needs to be rebuilt, and that's where we're at. So we're okay. going to try to locate some more funding for that. To do it properly instead of just putting a band-aid on it. Other questions for the town manager from the public? Mike Franklin. Now, there used to be some geographical markers in the part that told the elevation, the longitude and latitude, uh, and uh, before this blast goes, so I've been through the park looking for it. You know where it might be? No, nope. um, we actually, our engineers looked for it too when we were doing something else and they are gone. So, um, and I think they disappeared before the park rebuilt too. They were, well, well, well they was, weren't ours, so I don't know where they went to. Because it was on a big uh, slab there. I seen it on yeah. the, in the park, it was all it was on a, the cement. Yeah. But you know where it went? To? We're getting a new one? I don't know. If he was redoing all their maps, so I'm sure we'll see something at some point that shows up with elevations on it. Okay, there was another uh, <clears throat> mile marker, zero mile marker. It was just to the right of the congregational church. Uh, it was a little depression. You had to sweep the sand out to see it. And that was where everything was measured from Brandon. You know, the middle barrier. If it's a historic marker, they have to put it back. So. I don't. I, don't I, I haven't seen that one. I haven't seen that one. I can ask him about it. I, I don't know. Those are interesting items for further research. Mm -hmm. You getting all this down, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> Other questions from the public for the town manager. If not, we'll move along to public comment and participation. This used to be called items not on the agenda, so we'll start with the select board. I have nothing to bring up tonight that's not on the agenda. Mr. Bailey, have anything? Dude. Uh, we did not add it. I wasn't sure whether you were coming, so we can do it right now. Okay. Um, yes. I, I wanted to just have a uh, brief open discussion as to uh, the select board's handling um, either citizen suggestions or complaints as they come up um, with all the board members and the, and the public and whatever. So I, I believe the way we have been handling things in the last few years is that if someone calls us, we refer to, to we can get the information and call Dave with the information so that he can then follow things back, but then we don't uh, try to solve the problem on our own. and. Uh, just want to see how the board all feels on that and, and make sure that it's not really a policy, but it's our procedure that we do. Yeah, my, um, my thought is that when somebody contacts me, I reply um, so they get a response. And I forward it to the board so the board knows what's been, um, what I've received. And, um, and I certainly um, you know, remind them to person who's interested about the process and about the appropriate person to um, go to to solve their problems. And, um, and so, right, I would concur that that's, uh, that's the way we are. Right? I would also concur, it's been my habit or practice, I guess, um, that I'll kind of have a conversation once with someone about a particular issue, and then the second time I, I tell them that we need to come to the board with it. So it is probably worth while to talk to the camera and to talk to the folks in the room and to have the reporter hear this, um, that you know the select board, it's not like I represent a certain 
number of people, and so does Doug and Tim and Tracy and Brian. You know, we, we all represent the whole town. We can only act as a board. So if you have something that you want the select board to act on, the select board is here to listen to your concerns, but we're here to listen as a group because that's the way it's supposed to work. Um, so if you have something that the town manager could act on, he's certainly got an open door policy in his office, and he has the ear of all the department heads and so forth. If you have you know stuff highway, highway related or police related or code enforcement or rec related, things like that. But if there's a matter that you want the select board to address, um, really the select board as a whole needs to hear that. So none, none of us can speak for the select board to someone who has a concern. And none of us should be put in the position of speaking to the select board for someone else, is, is kind of how I think the board's practice has been. Yeah. Tracy, did you have anything? No, I agree with your, what you said. Yeah, and if clubs or organizations are recruiting us or asking our opinion, we give them a personal opinion, but we can't speak for the board, right? So, um, you know, I just want that clearly noted, so to speak, in our, by bringing it up, at least it's in the record, it's, it's in our minutes and whatever, that that's how we operate and that's how it has to be, so. Yeah, there's a little different flavor that's coming out, though, which is, has come up recently, is this, um, well, it's certainly true that we don't speak for the board as individuals, and that it, everything, any decisions need to come through the process, open meeting law, that kind of thing. Um, I think especially in a small community, it's helpful for board members to talk with community members. And, um, and so I think to suggest that we shouldn't be talking to the community members except in a, in a meeting process, I think is a mistake. And um, I, 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 I think the part that I would, Place very finely is to say um, is to completely support this idea that no no selectman can speak for the board or make uh, decisions in that regard. Um, but I would encourage selectmen to vigorously um, get to know the issues in our town and to talk with people to um, explore ideas and explore solutions, and then encourage them to come to the select board so it can go through a public process. And I think the distinction I'd like to draw is that. One of the fascinating things I learned when I became a selectman is that we actually act as all three elements of government. We act as a judicial um, procedure sometimes, we act as a legislative procedure sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we're an executive branch. Um, even though we have an executive, there are moments when we direct things this way. And when we're operating as a judicial setting, like for example, board of debate or something, it's really important that we don't have what are called ex parte communications and in that way, I think we have to be really careful about not having conversations outside of meeting format. However, when we're operating as a legislative body, which I think is most of the time, I often tell people, listen, if you want something to happen at the select board, you've got to convince three selectmen to support it. And I think it's appropriate for them to try to educate selectmen on issues that they care about. And, and I don't think it's deceptive. And if anything, I think it's, it's a desirable part of our process to educate ourselves on issues and become knowledgeable and perhaps advocate or speak against them, you know, uh, as you learn more information. And so, um, and, and so I, I, I think I, I slice it slightly different than the way Seth represented it. I think my, my point here for, you know, concern comes up that Many times their phone rings and if someone has got a problem, and it's nice to be able to help them solve the problem. But we can't solve the problem if the snowplow hits your mailbox, or if the you know there's a barking dog down the street and they you know want to call the police, or they can't get a response. You know, we can contact Dave. Dave can contact the department exactly. heads. Exactly. You know, and, and, and that that's the proper channels. And I don't mind that they, someone calls us, but they have to understand that we can't solve that problem. No, I, I agree with you. Man. And, and, and uh, if there's a, a group that wants, you know, our, our help and assistance, I, I agree. I, I think being, having our ear to the ground and talking to anyone and everyone we can is great, but we we, we need, need to be careful and they need to know that it's a fine line as to where we can uh, express our opinions as a board member. Right. So I just felt it was good to air at one time. Thank you. <coughs> you know, and if, if we bump it to Dave and 
we know that Dave's going to call the people involved, and, and we're good. So. Thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Bailey. I, I appreciate it, and I think that the select board always needs to be kind of aware of how people perceive the role of the select board, how people perceive the role of an individual member of the select board, and it's, it's good to uh, bring this up from time to time to refresh people on it. Mr. Guy, did you have anything uh, for public comment participation? No. Mr. Wyman? No. Okay. Members of the public, anything not on the agenda tonight that you'd like to talk about? I just Aaron had Warren. a question about that. Um, I hear what you're saying and completely understand and respect that. When would be a good time, when is the deadline to put something on the agenda for the select board? Generally Friday by lunch. Okay. Like 10, 20, so like the select board meetings are the second and fourth Mondays of the month, and the packets are usually done by Friday afternoons. Perfect. So yeah, the packets are delivered to each selectman at their home Friday evening for okay. review. But if there's something you want to talk about and you okay. haven't got it to be an agenda, this is the time for public comment time. Yep. Something, say something could happen on a weekend. You could come here and talk about. Okay. You know, so you never get told no. You can't talk. Right. Okay. And you can always, like, if you think of something tomorrow, mm -hmm. okay, we can make sure it's on the agenda. I mean, Elaine starts, has already started the agenda for the next meeting. Okay. So, yeah. It's always there to be added on. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And similarly, if it's a big enough thing, we, we may make sure it's worn properly so yep. when we make a decision, everybody knows that we're about to make decisions. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Other members of the public with items not on the agenda tonight that you would like to discuss? Mr. Bueller. Well, on, on this topic, um, what if it's an issue you're having that involves a lot of information and paperwork and it's submitted to the whole board as a complaint or whatever? <coughs> Is that what executive sessions are for? Or so they're, right, how so, are those addressed? Right. So if a matter comes, if, if, a, if a person in Brandon assembles some information and distributes it to the select board, without checking with anybody first. That is okay. And then I, I basically would say it's up to the select board to decide in what form, what forum to address it. So we have got an executive session tonight, which is actually to handle just such a thing. It's material that was sent to the select board, but which involves a public officer or employee's performance of his official duties. Okay. So we're going to address that in the executive session today. My only other question is it's three weeks till the town meeting, so will the budget be going out? Do you know when it's scheduled to the actual book? To be mailed? Yeah. What, what is the schedule for the yeah. actual book? So the, we're picking can't see it around. We're picking the books <laughs> up on Tuesday and they're going out Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you. Next not tomorrow Tuesday, next Tuesday. Okay. Good. No, that's great. Thanks. Other public participation this evening. Lee Cars. Um, I'm wondering what is the town's financial responsibility, if any, uh, in the integrity animal welfare case regarding the animals in their care? If it's okay, I will defer to the town manager on this because uh, I believe he found out some stuff as that was all unfolding. Okay, great. So I'm going to try to answer this and I'm going to keep chief in my right eye here because I screw it up. Okay. Um, we have a financial obligation to assist with costs until the folks that own the animals surrender them in the court. Right. And after that, it was up to, I can't think of the name of the place. Kind of the way sanctuary in the local county. Chief Rick did you say those two organizations again? Yep, yeah, the Kinder Way Sanctuary. The Kinder Way. Kinder Way Sanctuary. And the uh, Raleigh County Humane Society. They became financially um, obligated as of mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. fourth mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That was the fourth. They were financially obligated. Uh, September the fourth, right? So, so the recap is the 31st was the date that the town became obligated to take care of the animals. The fourth was the court date when the owner of the animals surrendered the animals from his possession. <coughs> and so in the intervening time, the, the town financially has to take care of them. And the, 
I, I have to say, I mean, I haven't had anything to do with this, but I have just been um, really heartened by the response of the animal community. Uh, many, many people, and, and I saw the picture of all the you know trailers lined up on the road that day to pick up the livestock and so forth. Many, many people with no thought to the expense involved or the inconvenience to them have taken these animals and, and brought them to their um, homes and farms and so forth. So I, and I think that speaks very well to not just the people around here, but to, in particular, the people around here who are farmers who take care of animals. Here, here. And I include Mr. Bailey in that. I know yeah, Mr. Bailey is. And I can, Chief, I had some information to give you maybe after the meeting, but if not, I'll come see you tomorrow. But yeah, the kind of way Sanctuary actually, uh, owners were in town today, and they did come look at the sheep and the goats at least today, and are trying to make arrangements to facilitate those going forward. So I've got some info for you. Does that answer the question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Other public comment participation tonight? I, I had a question, I guess, it's on the um, roof that, the, that Dave said they did a preliminary plan on. Is that just really preliminary? Because I couldn't read it. I couldn't tell what the columns were made up and stuff. It was so yeah, it's just a draft. It was so fine. It and it'll be, it'll be a cost estimate now that we okay. We like the design. Yeah, it's pretty small. Yeah, because I, I couldn't. I, I printed it off on my plotter. I mean, I have it this big and I couldn't oh. read it. But, <laughs> and, and I mean, of course, there'll be lighting. And, you know, so they've got a ways to go, in other words. Yeah, yeah. They'll do a perspective for you, I imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, we just met with them. Right, right. No, it's... Weeks ago, yeah. so, you know, it's... Baby pretty, steps, okay. I was trying to... Come on, guys, build this before town meeting. Was. Yeah, no, I understand. They didn't, they didn't want to move quite that fast. Okay, I just wanted to clarify yeah. how fast that is. Yeah, it's just, it's the early process. So yeah, you got to start fun. somewhere. Yeah. Great. Further public comment? Nothing else tonight. Okay, we'll move along. Item five, there are a couple of appointments before the board tonight. We'll take them individually. We have an appointment. Uh, Mr. Rafferton usually introduces these to us. Do you want to introduce this? Uh, sure. Um, this is uh, the first one is the Bravo coordinator. We have a letter from Mr. Tim Giles, um, just stating what's happened recently with the with the board on that, that we've had someone resign, and um, he sparked an interest in being the uh, chairman of that board. I'm already the chairman, then. It's the coordinator position. Coordinator. Yes. I need to say I recuse myself from this part of the conversation, but since it's an open meeting, I thought I could just stay. What's the pleasure of the board? <clears throat> Make a motion to approve Mr. Grounds. Mr. Wyman moves and Mr. Bailey is to uh, seconds to appoint Tim Giles as coordinator for the Bravo Brandon Restorative Justice Program. Mr. Giles recuses himself. <clears throat> is there discussion? Yeah, I mean, to me, it's a no brainer as he's been um, involved in this for a couple of years. He's been running it as the chairman. Um, and with the passing of Art Doughty, we, we need to keep this program going. And it's just uh, due to the total involvement that that makes sense to me. Questions from the public? None. If not, all in favor of appointing Tim Giles as coordinator of the Brand Restorative Justice Program, Bravo, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Any abstentions? Yes, Mr. Giles abstains. Thank you, Mr. Giles. Bro. Second appointment. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we do have a recent vacancy in our planning commission. Um, Mr. Nelson has stepped down, and um, Ethan Nelson. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we do have um, Allison Walter has sent a letter of interest. Um, we got last week. That's a pleasure of the board. Can we advertise the position at all? Uh, I, I don't believe we have. I think the board got Mr. 
Nelson's resignation on February 4th in the evening. And we have Al Wilson Walter's interest letter February 5th in the morning, but I don't think this has been advertised. No. I don't think we've had an opportunity. No, this is the first meeting we've had since that, so this would be where we would usually discuss it. Generally, generally it has been the practice that when a vacancy opens, we have at least announced it um, and given an opportunity for people who have interest to express interest. What's the board's feeling tonight? Um, this is the first time I've been involved with a planning commission appointment. Uh, have there been multiple people interested in the past? In the recent past, we did have one two years ago where we had to choose between two people. Not this past year, but 27, maybe 2017 or 18. Mm -hmm. The, the other thing I would just add into that discussion is this. Um, I believe the Planning Commission meets the first Monday of the month. They've met for February. They won't meet again until after the town meeting. So I don't think this is a matter of urgency. Well, perhaps um, yeah, you to table it, or? it would be um, it would be first good to say thank you for your letter <laughs> of interest. We always yeah. appreciate people who are um, interested in serving. And so um, I appreciate that very much. And, um, and and yet it seems that if we want to allow other people to know about the position, that tabling it might be um, a prudent thing to do. Yeah. Especially since there's no planning commission meeting coming up right away. Is that a motion? If it needs to be a motion, yes, I make a motion to table it. Do you want to put a time on table until after the town meeting, or I mean, the select board makeup could change, which might change. Uh, it might change your opinion about the the select board and the planning commission are not incompatible. You can be on both, but um, if you're elected to the select board, you may decide you don't want to be on the planning commission. Well, I want to do both. Want to do both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think two weeks is probably sufficient for announcing it and allowing other people interest, do you think? That's fine. So, um, how do you guys want to announce this? Because usually we just do it here at a meeting. Very <laughs> great. Sparse. Yeah. Okay. That's what we usually do. Paper much, so, I mean, you know, so the like, department, yes, but usually the planning commission, no. So, <laughs> so the, the seat that's open on the planning commission is open for a term ending June 30th, 2022. So that's two, two years and a little bit. And the motion is to table the appointment until the, the next board. select board. Yes. Is there a second? I'm sorry. Mr. Wyman, second. Is there a discussion? All in favor of tabling uh, the appointment to the next select board meeting, say aye. Aye. Abstain. Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. All right, so that's not enough. We have to. Uh, so wait a minute, if there was. We didn't get an aye. We didn't get enough votes. If there was an aye and abstention, what right. is the other category? Right, there is no other category. So we're going to have to recount. I see, yes. So. Again, those in favor of tabling till the next select board meeting say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. I say no. Also no. Abstentions. You say no to abstentions. I say no to tabling till the next meeting. I abstain. Mr. Bailey abstains. So the motion to table fails. <clears throat> the lack of three votes. For lack of a majority. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Further pleasure of the board? Well, then I make a motion to accept your um, application. There's a motion to accept the application and make the appointment. Is there a second? Is there a second? Motion fails for lack of a second. What is the further pleasure of the board? <laughs> I move to table the appointment until after town meeting. Is there a second? Yeah. There's a second. Is there a discussion? 
discussion. Is yes. that when we normally appoint for this? I know we do a lot of appointments and reorganization after town meeting. <coughs> no. Uh, no, this but the is this planning this? commission is usually June. That's usually the July. Well, and this is on a, a resignation, so this would be about right. when it's resigned. Right. So if, if it were under discussion, I'm fascinated. Yeah. So what's the other benefit of tabling for more than two weeks? So why did you suggest that? I think the select board composition could change uh, in two weeks. And you think so that's likely to change the um, outcome of this appointment? Whether it's likely or not likely, I think that the present select board may well not be the select board at the time. May I add something to this conversation? Sure. We've had a couple instances in the last past year where there have not been enough people at a planning commission meeting to have a quorum, which means they have a meeting where they can't make any decisions because they don't have enough people to do it. So I just want to throw that out there. And, and um, since we're in discussion mode, um, I, I think I would um, suggest that we're the select board that's sitting now. We have a resignation now. And unlike our federal government that decides when you're near the end of a term, you're not allowed to do appointments, we're, we are the select board now. And so I think I, I would say that it's our job to make the appointment now. And then if there becomes a position open when the new select board happens, then it's their job to make that appointment then. Um, so that's my suggestion. Okay. Further discussion? Yeah, I, I might as well be open. And my reason for abstaining was, of course, we're running against each other in an election in a couple of weeks, and I didn't fear, feel it was fair to, to vote on that. So, considering that we have to have, so that's why we was expecting. But without Mr. Coolidge here, we don't have enough, and this all gets muddled up. So I will, I will agree to vote. Yeah. I have a question, Mr. Bueller. Where did the advertising of this get lost? Where is it? Nothing lost. Okay. Like, he just resigned. No, no, I know, but, but um, you, you discussed advertising the position, so if you appoint someone tonight, you're not advertising. Are you going to have? I don't think we, we don't normally run an advertisement. Not normally, other members of the planning committee or okay. people that are in, in this room come, you know, come to meetings, pass the name on, and, you know, some okay. we get. Volunteers. But I'm gonna bet there's finally something on an article about our select board. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, this one's probably gonna. I think what Mr. Atherton was saying earlier, though, was that this announcement at the select board meeting and on Peg TV kind of thing, and in the minutes for the number of people in town who read the minutes, would be the announcement of vacancy. But that it hasn't been our practice to place a paid ad as if this were no, 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 okay. Position. No, I understand. Okay. So there's a motion and a second to table until after town meeting. Is there further discussion? Um, what happens, well, I guess, uh, what happens, I mean, we haven't, we've decided not to table it for two weeks. Right. We've decided not to appoint you today. Right. If we don't table it till after town meeting day, does her offer of, of um, you know, being on the planning commission, stay open and, I mean, we can leave it to another time? You're asking if it's like de facto tabled? Uh, I guess. I mean, it, 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 I would say whatever the board has in front of it as a motion has to pass with three. So if the motion, if whatever the board gets tonight for motions, none of them pass with three votes in the affirmative, then functionally, yes, it would be tabled. With, in an indefinite way. If someone makes the same motion as our repeal, can it? I don't, I don't think you can. You can't do it again on the same night. Oh, that's you can if you're on. You can, you can make a motion to reconsider. Mr. Moore will affirm this for me, I think. You can make a motion to reconsider if you are on the winning side of the motion that the original motion. Well, the original motion failed. It wasn't the winning side. Because we didn't have three against, we didn't have three for. So functionally, the two would be the winning side. The, the one is not the winning side. On well, any even though so with five of us on the board, three of us would be a winning side. We haven't had three on any. Well, right, because we're missing a member. <coughs> so what I'm saying is you can't move to reconsider because your motion lost. I see. 
You can only move to reconsider a motion that you were on the side that prevailed. The side that prevailed tonight so far has been the side for inaction. Okay. Is that correct, Mr. Moore? That would be my interpretation. That's right. Thank you, Mr. Moore. So glad you're here. But it also doesn't mean also doesn't mean that it couldn't be revisited the next select board meeting regardless. It could be brought up again at that point and voted on at that select board meeting. As a fresh issue. As a fresh issue. Yeah. I think it can be. Is there if the motion was worded in any different <laughs> format, right? Oh well, that's an interesting question. Go for it, Doug. <laughs> well, there's a motion on the floor. That's true. Put a second. Unless we choose to amend that motion. Is there further discussion? Or is there an amendment? Well, okay, since we're still in discussion mode. So <laughs> if, if we don't um, make, if, if, if no motion succeeds, mm -hmm. and this goes on, um, we could bring this up at the next meeting yeah. and treat it as fresh then and um, possibly have a different outcome then. Yes. We're still going to have a vacancy no matter oh. what. So for two Someone's weeks, because I understand the planning position. commission doesn't meet for two weeks, is that correct? We don't meet this next month until the third time. So meeting. they won't meet for five weeks. So, Dave, am I missing something? Is there a problem with having a, a vacancy for two weeks? No. I just want to be sure I understand. Okay. Folks, and I guess my point was, now that it's been brought up, it's been advertised, correct? I, I think what it's been advertised as much as we right. would right. normally advertise Probably right. a commission. So <laughs> it's been, so, right, so it's, been, this, yeah. so it's been advertised, so if it comes up in two weeks, it's been advertised. Right. The decision can be made right. based on that. So, okay. Yes, I'm, I'm ready to vote. You're ready to vote. Is everybody ready to vote? Mm -hmm. The motion is to table till after town meeting. All in favor of tabling until after town meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? I'm going to abstain because I'm abstaining the whole argument so far so okay so that that is two to one to one so that fails also so absent a further motion then functionally it's tabled but indefinitely great Tracy or you could vote move to reconsider because you're on the winning side of a, of a, of a vote who knows? I, I, yes. I think. Mr. Distance. There were two yeses. But there I think Mr. Moore is nodding instead. I think that's right. I think one in the evening tonight. I will vote. Yeah, I understand that. Two yeses. At this point. Further uh, work on that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think the last thing I would, I would say <laughs> is I apologize for the uncomfortableness <laughs> of this because I think you deserve um, that apology. Um, and I, and I hope you persevere and that we can see this through the Thank you. And I also apologize. I, I felt coming into the room tonight that abstaining was the proper thing for me to do. But then by one segment being missing, that's created a, a nightmare. And I, I sincerely apologize. Thank you. I would change my vote if I thought that's what was going to happen. Okay, we'll move along. Item six, approval of a certificate of no appeal or suit pending. So this is from our assessors, our number of assessors, that um, pretty much says what it is, that we have no pending suits to recover taxes paid under protest. Um, and we should have been doing this every year. I was going to say, I don't recall seeing this before. Yeah. So we have it this year. Uh, is this for our information? Or no, we have to, for our signature, it's for signature. It's for signature. It's the pleasure of the board on the certificate from the Nemeric Assessor that there is no appeals or suits pending regarding taxes related to the April 1st, 2019 grant list. This is required. I, I make a motion that we um, approve this. Second. Motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Okay, now if we're going to sign this, <laughs> What does this mean? I mean, uh, do we know that well, we're just supposed to take 
We're supposed to understand that she's telling us that there's no. Well, we don't have any suits pending, or we would know. So that's exactly what it means. So yeah, yeah. I guess I'm just trying to know how I, so I know that that's true, and so I, I believe you, of course. And so, well, if we have pending suits, you guys definitely know about that. <laughs> okay, so this is fairly simple. Further discussion? If not, ready to vote. All in favor of. Uh, Signing the certificate of no appeal or suit pending. Say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Uh, that was unanimous. Item seven: approval of a draft policy on consideration of state and federal matters. So, um, I drafted this. It doesn't say draft on it, but it's a draft. It's entirely the first pass with it. So, um, I will give credit to Mr. Bailey uh, for the concept of. He made an offhand remark to me couple, three weeks ago, um, regarding a resolution against resolutions, and he said it with, with a chuckle, but basically that's what this amounts to, is a resolution against resolutions. I think that many of you are probably aware, um, many of you on the board are probably aware, there's been some towns uh, geographically near to us and distant from us in Vermont which have um, taken some positions on matters which I believe to be outside the authority of a select board. And my desire with this proposed policy is to, um, I guess you could call it, stick to the knitting. I think that the board functions best when it does what it is authorized to do, which is financial personnel and policy oversight of the town. And I think the board will get into trouble if it goes out of those guardrails and starts taking positions on amendments to the Constitution, things of that nature. I don't think the people of this town expect when they elect the select board that the select board is going to attempt to speak for them on matters like that. And I think it would tend toward disharmony on the select board to have um, levels of controversy around issues like that. So I offer this to the board as a policy when we don't have anything coming before the board right now. So if something were to come to the board and we had no policy, I think we would be obligated to at least consider it. If we do have a policy, I think it's, it's reasonable to say that the policy is not directed at any particular petition or any particular controversial issue that someone might have decided to bring before the select board. I wonder if it's useful for the public over here who don't have this in front of them, and since it's not that long, for you to read this into the record so they know what we're talking about, because um, at this point, the title doesn't entirely capture the, um, the, the, the policy. If that's the case, I apologize. And I would like to suggest, uh, Mr. Chair, that after we read it, and we have any discussions here tonight that we don't actually vote on it tonight, then we, we bring this home and think about it for two weeks like we have other policies that we've done so that we, sure. are, we have had time to do any investigative that we want. So, so I can read it, or um, the only man allowed at the mom prom could read it. I know Bill has a wonderful voice. <laughs> oh my God, that's your new title. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll read it. Yeah, I think it's so I, I call this policy on consideration of state and federal matters, but that's this whole thing is up for debate. Yeah. Purpose. This policy expresses the sense of the select board, here and after board, regarding the propriety of board discussion, board facilitated discussion by the public during board meetings, and board action related to matters over which the board is granted no authority in the Vermont statutes. Background. Vermont municipalities and the officers thereof are granted those powers specified by the legislature and no other. This is called Dillon's Rule. General supervision of the affairs of the town of Brandon belongs to its select board. See Title 24 VSA Section 872. The select board has no authority to speak for the town on matters outside this remit. Such matters properly reside with state and federal elected officials and judges. This policy is adopted at a time when no specific petition, motion, or discussion is before the board with a view to consider and enact a policy at a time when the board may fairly choose a dispassionate and impartial course. 
The board is likely to be presented with opportunities in the future to take positions on issues of varying levels of controversy, and having such a policy in place beforehand may helpfully inform the board's response upon future occasions. Harmony is essential to efficient operation of the select board. Debate of controversial issues over which the board has no authority tends to undermine harmony as well as rob the board of the time it rightly devotes to matters under its purview, the efficient operation of the town of Brandon through financial, personnel, and policy oversight. Policy. Therefore, it is the policy of the board that on matters, including but not limited to, the federal or state constitutions, law or policy, which are not clearly relevant to the board's charges in statute, one, the board will take neither action nor position, two, the board will decline requests to consider petitions or deliberate thereon, three, the board will not permit public debate to consume undue time at its meetings. This resolution may be waived in any instance or rescinded in its entirety by majority board vote. Thank you. So I, I move adoption for the sake of discussion. Is there a second? I'll second for the sake second for the sake of discussion from Mr. Bailey. Discussion. Mr. Guys, is there a discussion? Yeah. Um, I, I, um, I, I, I like that we have Dillard's rule in this state. I think it's um, appropriate that we stick to um, making decisions on matters that we have authority to make decisions over. And in fact, that's why I share your concern, because as I've seen in the recent news, um, uh, and to be specific, just so it's not an imaginary issue for those who may not be following this, um, the gun sanctuary movement is, um, uh, is perhaps the most uh, appropriate example of a problematic element that I think this policy is meant to address. Um, however, um, I, I have a number of, um, of two specific um, specific issues with, with making a policy like this. Um, and I think the, um, the first is that when there are issues that extend beyond the town and that are either state or federal issues, um, we all can have an opinion on them as individuals. And um, sometimes a reporter will even report on our individual positions as they're making their articles and they're saying, you know, Joe Schmo thinks this or that, and it's useful in creating a story and a, and a, a narrative about issues in our, in our um, public discussion. But a select board has a, a, has a different amount of weight and thus, for a select board to have an opinion on an issue could be substantively useful in moving um, uh, public issues in, in the public discourse. Even though we may not have authority over making a decision, it still could be useful. Uh, like, for example, let's say there's businesses that we want to attract to our town, and we might make a resolution that says, you know, we as a board are in favor of um, certain kinds of industry coming to our town, which would be a way of sending a signal to businesses that you know, we're welcoming for them. Um, we might have a position um, about a state law that actually somehow hurts Brandon's interest. And, and by having a position as a select board at the state house level, they might say, you know, Brandon's select board, as a number of other boards, um, actually feel you know, this way about this position. And this isn't implying, which is the problem with the gun sanctuary example, this doesn't imply that we have authority over these matters. Um, it's not a false um, decision making. It's rather saying as elected representatives, um, it's not inappropriate for us to have discussions and make resolutions that might move the public discourse. And, um, and I might add that if the public is uh, not comfortable with a resolution that we make, um, they're certainly able to come and be at our select board meetings and have us make a different resolution if they can convince the board, or ultimately to vote us out of office, which is an appropriate process for having the board accurately represent the citizens of Brandon. Um, would you care to discuss that before I give my second? Yeah. Um, the two examples that you specified, you know, trying to attract a certain type of business or industry and responding to a state law or policy that hurts Brandon. 
those specifically are things already that the select board does, can do, should do, wouldn't be prohibited from doing if this policy were enacted because we are charged with general supervision of the affairs of the town and economic development has been for you know modern generations recognized as a proper municipal function and likewise you didn't specify what kind of law you had in mind that hurts Brandon but you know we've had example in the last number of years like a number of communities in Vermont have had um, difficulties with the way Vermont handles um, taxation and so forth with mobile home parks and, and that again that falls under the board's general supervision of the town we are the tax collecting agents for the town and the school and the fire district and we absolutely have advocated I think Mr. Atherton has recently had uh, some progress in the legislature um, on that particular matter. So uh, none of those things, because those are local impact things, none of those things would be prohibited by having a policy like this. Right, I think I was trying to identify things that we specifically don't have authority over, but that we might have an opinion on. But we do have authority in both of the cases that you used as a Well, and I didn't um, reach deep enough to find a position, a uh, situation where um, it would be reasonable for us to have an opinion without having authority. Because I think that there are those cases where we don't have any authority, but we do have a, a, a reason to have an opinion. I, I, I can't think of one. Well, that's actually going to be my third <laughs> um, point, which is that most of the um, of the things that you're talking about, we already have the authority. We already have a, a way to manage them. For example, today, somebody brought up an issue in front of the select board, and we felt that it was not um, something we could deal with. We could listen to them and decide, you know, we really don't have any authority over this. Thank you for bringing it up. But, you know, this isn't the place to, to handle the problem. And so it, we already can do this. So to have a policy, I, I mean, and this was my second um, issue, is that this seems to um, err on the side of limiting debate, and I think we should err on the side of a select board of encouraging conversation. And I worry that if someone brought something up in front of the board, um, one of the select board members might say, hey, you've got a policy that says that um, this really isn't the place to talk about this, before we even have a chance to really hear and, and make a, an informed um, decision. Um, and I, I realize that you allow being able to overrule this policy, but I just worry that it already sets the bar that we need to have a majority to overrule the policy when we already you know, have a process to handle um, discussion. I mean, I haven't felt there's a problem with, um, um, with, with controlling um, the, the public discourse part of our, our meetings. In the recent past, there has not been. In the further distant past, there have been. And I, th I think the third point in the policy acknowledges that public debate is appropriate and that people will bring issues to the select board without the select board knowing in advance and people have a right to do that and people should talk about that to the point where they start consuming too much time. You know, the recommendation from the League of Cities and Towns and from the Secretary of State's office is that when we publish the agenda, we put times yeah. on each of the agenda items. I am totally against that. I think that tends to stifle debate. And I think that that also, I, I, I just don't, I don't see any value in doing that. But a number of boards in Vermont say, you know, public comment participate. The school board, actually, for the town that we live in, right? So the school board has public comment participation, you know, like four minutes or five minutes or something at the beginning of the meeting, I think. And it, nowhere are we talking about that kind of a limitation. Right, right. No, I, I'm glad we don't do that. Um, I mean, when I look through the three specific policy items, you say the board will not take action. It's like we already can't take action on things we don't have authority over. And but, so, but boards are doing it all over Vermont right now. But we already can't do that. I mean, the fact that they do that doesn't mean we, it doesn't even mean they can. I mean, they're going to be challenged if in fact they're passing resolutions that they don't have authority to make. So I think that that's redundant of the Dillon's rule. The Dillon's rule already says we cannot take action on things we don't have jurisdiction over. Um, 
And, and I've commented on the reason for us to be able to take a position on something we don't have authority over, even though I have come up with a good example for you. Um, the, the, the number two, the board will decline requests to consider petitions or deliberate the law. I think it's a mistake to decline a request without allowing them to make their case as to why they think it's important for us to listen to this. And I think that suggesting we're going to decline, decline a request is an example of erring on the side of cutting off conversation rather than um, encouraging it. Um, and, and the third one, as you just said, we already have the way to um, uh, limit uh, public debate that seems to be consuming too much of a meeting. And so I don't think it's necessary to have a policy in addition to what we already have. I think, you know, the gun issue and, and Pittsburgh's handling it brought this to mind. Clearly, I believe two years ago, never came to anyone actually having a resolution, but there was some discussion around town on the marijuana issue, whether we should, irregardless of what Vermont law is, we should allow a marijuana store in Brandon, or if, or if the state does legalize it and comes up with their plan on how they're going to sell it, we should have a plan that says we don't want them in there. And it, it's kind of getting trapped in the, in the middle. You know that um, I feel strongly about. It. I think you know, it, Vermont's not that big of a state. It's not like we're California or something. And if Montpelier says this is how we should do it, I think we should follow it. I don't want to be a sanctuary a town or city. Right. Is my is my own feeling and why I, with humor, said we should have a resolution against resolution. You know, <laughs> uh, to to not get caught and and spend time in debate on, on something, so. I mean, is, is this really um, an attempt to basically restate Dylan's rule? Because isn't this really just saying we're a town that observes Dylan's rule, which is to say we don't make decisions about things we don't have authority over? Fun functionally, it's, it's very closely related to Dylan's rule, yes. It, it's restating. It might be specifying further than what Dylan, I mean, I, I, I find the need for it because select boards across Vermont are full with reasonable people, like we are reasonable people, who have a job to do, which is to deal with the finances, the personnel, and the policies of the town that they've been elected as the select board for. And yet, those good-willed people who are intelligent people, who I have no doubt about their intentions, they have this job to do, and yet they have decided that they are going to enter into discussions that are tilting at various windmills or hobby horses or whatever the images that, that we want to use. Yeah. I understand. Thank you. I, I'm just trying to get us to do what we have been doing for the last five years, six years, which is paying attention to the things that the select board is charged by law with paying attention to and making improvements in the town, getting the right personnel in the right positions, getting a stable financial situation under us. Um, and I don't want the board to become unnecessarily divided because some crazy right-wing petition or some crazy left-wing petition comes in and we are put in a position, like you say, being caught in the middle of constituents who are supposed to serve, but constituents who would be better served trying to bring their petition to the quote unquote political branches. Like these are, if you have a problem with you know, the state constitution, if you have a problem with the federal constitution, you have state and federal elected officials to deal with those things. Like we should be dealing with stuff that has an actual real impact on the people who live in this town. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Carr. Um, we've dealt with this issue of something similar to this, I think, like the first or second year I was moderated. Um, the corporations are people, and they wanted to get something on the warning about saying that Brandon doesn't believe that corporations are people, and it was dealt with that way to be put up, they were told to put it under other business, brought it up under the business, and the will and the voice of the people was heard through a motion and a and a vote of, you know, 104 people voted in favor of saying that corporations aren't people and 14 said they were. 
um, something like that. So the will of the people can be heard in that in that way and shape, and it gives you also an out to say this is not something as substantive as the guns and other issues that we want to be decided by five people there and 15 of us here. Um, this needs to be brought up, I would tell them it needs to be brought up in our town, town meeting and other, under other business. You stand, you make your case, and if you have 200 people at your town meeting, you have a, a significant voter representation of what your feelings are on, on a difficult issue. That's an excellent point. So I, I want to clarify that this is only directed to the select board and that absolutely the town meeting is the town meeting and the town meeting is superior to the select board in every respect and the town meeting would have the ability to off anybody could offer a resolution that the moderator found to be in order and this this is not going to trim that liberty in any way it's a non that, is that what you're, that, that's what you're it's a non-binding yes. resolution basically what comes out of the town well, meeting. And, and, and much the same as, as we came up with a position, it would be a non-binding because we don't have authority, even if we did it at the select board level. The difference is that the town meeting, there is no superior body in the town to the town meeting. Right. That's the we the people. Mm -hmm. We're not the we the people. We've been delegated some authority from the people, and that authority does not include the authority to speak for them on matters other than municipal government. Um, I, I'd love to respond briefly to the um, your comment, which I think is interesting about um, you know if there were a left wing thing or a right wing thing and it caused division of the board. I, I'm actually one who believes um, a certain amount of um, conflict can be healthy, and in fact, um, if, if we all could learn to have healthy conflict at our <laughs> all levels of government, that would be a, a good thing. And so I'm not sure I. Um, Agree that having, you know, kind of like this, having a, a, a an honest debate about ideas uh, is harmful. If anything, I think it's it further supports my feeling that um, this might be a way to nurture discussion. It's like if we came up with, um, if we accepted uh, suggestions from the public on on to have resolutions and and we talked about it, it might be a way to actually get the community talking about issues. Um, it could be quite constructive. Um, I mean, I think we're having a constructive discussion right now about a matter that's appropriate to discuss at the select board level. And I think that there are plenty of those matters that we can discuss and learn to be grown-ups about, you know, not seeing the same point of view. And I, I think it's an unnecessary injection of danger to open up to discussions that we have no authority to resolve. Can you, can, you, can you concretely identify the fact that you don't have that jurisdiction? I mean, is, that, is that what you're kind of saying? You're going to be able to say, this issue is not, this is not the venue for that issue. But, right? You, can, you, you're going to be able to identify those that, that situations. Would be, that would be the effect of yeah. having this kind of And I think you, that, at that point, you say to them, the proper venue for this discussion is town meeting, and, you're, and it's off your plate. And, and not just town meeting. It can be town meeting, or it can be your state representative. It can be your state sure, senators. Yeah. It can be the court system in some cases. You know, they but, but it's, they it's want the voice of the town to be heard. That's you know, town meeting is where they want you to have that voice. Right. Further discussion. Further input from the public. Okay. So there's a motion and a second. It was for discussion. Do you want to make an amendment that uh, we lay it over meeting? I definitely would like to make an amendment that we lay it over. And I'll have a chance to, to uh, think about it in a couple of weeks. Great. That's our normal on, on policy anyway. Uh, I'll second your amendment. Thank you. Okay. So there's a motion and a second to lay this over. Let me get Any discussion on that? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 That's four. Uh, so the main motion doesn't have to get voted on because we voted to the table. Brian's going to be so sad to come back. <laughs> I bet you will. <laughs> item 7A, uh, Mr. Giles has a, an item about the BLSG Insect Control <coughs> District report in the town report. Yeah, in the last um, few days, I've um, noticed some things in the front porch board, one of which reported to the board. Um, 
that there is um, some erroneous information in the BLSG report that's going into our town report. And um, in Salisbury, they um, decided to remove the one paragraph that's erroneous. Um, and the BLSG folks, um, uh, I, I guess the word has accepted that um, a judgment of removing that one paragraph from the report. Um, and the comment that I read um, was that it was difficult to remove it from the other towns because um, of the late date. And, um, and, and I guess specifically, so everybody knows what it is I'm talking about, um, there's been some um, uh, there's been some problems with the BLSG making um, claims of health uh, mess public health messaging about mosquito control, and um, the Vermont Department of Health has apparently um, reprimanded the BLSG, um, advising them to specifically not make health claims about their mosquito control um, program and that their mosquito control was primarily a nuisance control um, uh, um, program and not a public health program. Can I, can I clarify? Please. I, I believe they said the adulticide program was a nuisance control program. It says here, based on data and input from the Centers for Disease Control and Protection, the CDC, we are certain that truck mounted control of adult mosquitoes does right. not significantly disrupt the amplification of a vector borne disease or virus in the mosquito population. Right. So it is not to say that all BLSG operations do not have a positive impact on public health. They are saying the CDC says truck mounted spraying of adult mosquitoes does not. However, that is that however, that is not primarily what BLSG's focus is, their primary focus is larvicidal application. Right. I think the, um, the, the part that I read that was, um, I think the reason I'm bringing it up here at the meeting is that um, the, um, the environmental surveillance, it, it, it has a whole bunch of alphabet soup here. There's a state level, um, uh, program in, in, in charge of monitoring health issues surrounding mosquitoes. And they specifically um, uh, advised the BLSG not to um, claim health um, benefits from mosquito um, spraying. And, and I think that's the, um, the level of clarity that I'm trying to, um, to raise here. And, um, and specifically, I was interested, uh, Dave, when you said that um, you're picking up the reports on the 18th, um, which in my mind says that they haven't been printed yet, um, I wonder if we might consider the same solution that Salisbury took, which so, is to yeah. remove, or well, just to be complete, to, to remove one small paragraph at the end of their report, which the BLSG agreed to remove from the Salisbury report. So just a couple things that I, read the same article. Oh, good. But wasn't Salisbury also saying that they were trying to get out of the BLSG or that they wanted to vote to get out of the BLSG and this was one of their things? I do that's, consider that That's my first question. The yeah. second thing is, I don't know that we've ever been like the, we've never changed anybody's <clears throat> reports that they put in like with the school district or the BLSG. I mean, that's not, yeah. you know, then we'd be sort of sabotaging someone else's words, it, I guess for me, it would feel like if the BLSG came to us and said, hey guys, by the way, we screwed something up, can we get out of the court? It makes sense to me. Yeah, I, I struggle with this as well, because I mean, as a selectman, I feel like um, the integrity of the town report is something I have a certain responsibility for. If I know something is false in the town report, it's my job to speak up and say, hey, I think you know there's a mistake. And um, and if, for example, the school board um, had a report and I found something in it that was factually inaccurate, um, I, I would want that to be uh, fixed if possible, you know, before we printed the report. And in this case, I don't think we'd be changing the BLSG's words because, in fact, they've agreed 
to let Salisbury pull this paragraph. And th what I read is that they would have pulled it from the other towns if it hadn't been so close to printing deadline. So I'm just trying to figure out if we still have that option available to us. I have no idea. I could call the printers and find out. But I, I still feel reason. like, me personally, mm -hmm. I don't want to change somebody's writing without their permission. Um, I really don't. I, I don't think that's a, I'm not comfortable with doing that at all. I think that the BSG <coughs> should contact the select board and yes. say, look, we, we need to take this out. I'm, yeah, I'm not comfortable doing that at all. It, it might be appropriate to get, um, uh, in, to, get, to be in contact with the BLSG and find out if they, in fact, would um, support removing this if we could from our, um, our town report. I think that would be the right order. Mr. Burning Pound, um, this, if there's an issue, you always can bring us up at town meeting. <laughs> yeah. You can say, I just want to bring it to attention, the report. And this issue of the report, the good thing is you always have, people, mostly have people from, anybody that has a, something on the warning usually has a representative there. And if, and if you want to talk about getting information out to the public, that's a perfect time to do it. You can no, say, I have a question about this. And they can say, well, yeah, maybe the, the Delta side isn't as effective as the side, but we feel it knocks down a significant number, blah, 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 blah. And it can help people make a decision on whether it's something they want to go for or not. Yeah, I, I, I certainly considered that as, as my only recourse, but I decided with a select board meeting and still before the, the reports have been published that it was appropriate to bring it up at this stage. I think there's a different dance partner with Salisbury and the BLSG, so that could be part of it too. Yeah, uh, maybe they didn't. Maybe they felt like they had to take it out of there, and they, they, they. I don't know how they feel. We don't know. So maybe the town meeting is a place to bring that issue up. Let them say exactly why they're coming or not. Okay. How about in your business, of course? That's not the proper way. Yeah, I want to come in tomorrow. Yes, we can wait. So further discussion. I I really feel pretty strongly that. The select board would be way overstepping its authority to make any edits to any of the reports that are submitted to the town report. I think that we submit the budget to the town report, we're accountable for it. We submit the report of the select board to the town report, we're accountable for it. Everything else comes from someone else and they're accountable for it. And I, I really would hesitate to to put us in that position of being the editor. Now, I, I share your concern, and perhaps I worded it wrong, and, and Dave helped me clarify it by saying, you're right, just changing someone's words is entirely inappropriate. But I think checking with them to see if, in fact, um, they do consider it um, erroneous, which is the sense that I got from everything I've read, is that they actually agree that that paragraph is erroneous. So if that's the case, I don't have objection to asking Mr. Atherton to make a contact with BLSG and seeing if they will authorize the change to their own report, but I don't think it has anything to do with the select board okay. at this time. Yeah, I think that's appropriate. Are you comfortable with it? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. if, if, if even possible. Let's see what I can do. That's about it, but it, but it has to it has to come from them. It, we can reach out to them, but they they've got to authorize changing what they submitted. If, if in fact might, they wish, to. might want to reach out to the printer. If they're already printed. Uh, maybe it would be. Well, and it's certainly true that the printer may be too far along. But I I, I would suggest that when we reach out to the LSG, we um you know we're reaching out with specific factual um, information that suggests that that paragraph is, is inaccurate. And that it's not just a, um, you know, we like this, we don't like this, it's a feeling thing. This is this is of apparently a, a factually inaccurate statement in the report. I totally understand and respect what you're saying, Tim, and I really think that Bernie Carr's comment of that this should be discussed at town meeting would be the best course of action at this point. And we had our proof for the town report last week, and it went Thursday, I think. Yeah. I, so it's, I mean, it's, it's, you know, yeah. I, my father used to say it's a day late and a dollar short, and I think we're there. Like, these changes would have been great a month ago, but we are. No, if I'd have known about it, I didn't, certainly didn't hold back. Right. <laughs> it wasn't like I was waiting for this moment to drop it on you. 
Um, and I, I struggled with what I should do when I decided to bring it up here. It's, um, and I, I'm prepared to bring it up at town meeting. Mr. Chairman? Uh, and, Mr. and just a question, too, and I may guess can hit me about the head and shoulders brings up, but does this, if, if this were to happen, does this set the precedent then for next year as kind of employees that we have to go through everybody's report? So, for instance, somebody that's looking for an appropriation, going through and fact checking each of their reports. Well, this, this is the danger. I mean, like, like, I mean, I just worry about us getting to that point where we're now fact checking everybody else's well, letters. Well, it's important to see this as a spectrum right. because while I, I would agree it's a problem if the implication is that we now have to then proof factually everything that's submitted to the town report, but by the same token, we shouldn't <laughs> have stuff that's clearly inaccurate going into our town report just kind of going, oh, well, you know, um, we don't really have to think about this. It's like if there's clearly something that we see is not correct, I think it's reasonable for us to push back and say um, this is factually inaccurate. I think there's a middle ground is my suggestion. I, I don't think we should just be accepting things in the town report um, without any... I think that next year, like, sorry, sorry, that next year, the entire slug should be appropriating that town report so not us folks in the town office that there are issues with it. <clears throat> Maybe we need a careful policy to be developed, but I, I think that I think common sense dictates that whoever submits the report is responsible for what's inside their report. And if there's a factual error in some other organization's report, not our authority to fix it not our responsibility for having accepted it. We're not even accepting this report. We're literally just printing this report to deliver to the townspeople. They belong to the BLSG. If the BLSG has something in their report that is problematic, then the BLSG has to be accountable and answerable to the people for it. Yeah. Now, I understand that. I think, I think, again, we're caught in the middle if we try to take any action that would change a, a report submitted by an entity that we have always published. And I agree, I don't think it's up to us to prove that. Uh, probably the reports are going to be in here. I mean, if, if, if there's a problem with it, as Bernie said, I think it's something needs to be brought up at the town meeting for that particular report. So there was, is there board action required? I don't feel like there's board action required. Well, you had suggested that they might reach out to the LSG to find out if they were interested in having the paragraph removed. And that's, I think that's, that's a suggestion, yeah. I think that's a good suggestion. And that's been acknowledged. And perhaps, I mean, I'm happy with whatever he finds out from that inquiry. Well, I think we have to be happy with it because I guess <laughs> if we're not happy with That's the why answer, I chose to be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> be happy. Very good. Better to be happy than not. But as a matter of public information, mm -hmm. I think we've at least used this forum to raise what appears to be um, a matter of concern in a report that's going to appear at the time. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Item eight, the two warrants. The first warrant is uh, $110,265.47. Make a motion to approve warrant number 110, 265.47. Mr. Bailey moves to approve. Is there a second? Sorry, Mr. Wyman seconds. Any discussion or questions on the bill? Two, two quick questions. Mr. Bailey. Just at the bottom of the uh, third page, top of the fourth page, the Vermont Defender Work Program signs for by our road signs from. We bought signs for um, Prospect Street for the corners. I think they're already up. Thank you. So I, I was curious about the psychological evaluation and assuming that there's some easy answer. When we have no possible reverse. Yeah. $15, that's very important. It's really good well night. <laughs> <laughs> Further questions? If 
not ready to vote. All in favor of approval of the warrant as presented, say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. That's unanimous. Item B, Route 7, warrant $36,699.07. Morning, morning, approve. Mr. Wyman moves to approve. Mr. Bailey seconds. It's two boys in the case. Any discussions? Have you had a chance to look over these warrants, Dave? Yes, they look appropriate. Thank you. Ready to vote? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed say no, that's unanimous. So at this time, the select board will recess. We will convene a board of sewer commissioners. We will then convene the board of liquor control commissioners. And then we will have one executive session on the agenda. Thank you.